this message confronts mindsets that the enemy doesn't want us to get rid of. Um, and it, it, it exposes where we are for real, for real. Say for real, for real. Because sometimes we can sum ourselves up, and that's why it's not good to sum yourself up, because you can think you're someplace that you're not. And you can deceive yourself. And there are many people who are saying, I'm here financially, I'm in this status, in this, this sector, this category, and really you're not. I know this because that's where I was. Um, we considered ourselves a middle class or upper middle class, and we really were not. We were lower and poor um, because we didn't have the understanding that we have now. And so we had to confront this mindset that kept us. Notice I said confront the mindset, not the system, not, not, not white people, not the job, not the man. We had to confront this mindset that we carried regarding money. Um, and so when I talk about these things, it is very, 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 very um, um, sometimes difficult because people don't want to own up to where they are. Um, so because religion has made us say, let's just come in, turn around three times, touch your neighbor, and we're going to all be okay. And that's not really the truth. It doesn't really work like that. Um, I have been in church, and I have done all of those things, and thank God for them um, in the proper season or whatever. But we had to do some work, man. We had to get down and do some work. We had to realize, first, this is where we are, number one. Number two, we are in trouble. Um, number three, if we don't fix this, um, we're going to be in bigger trouble. Number four, we ain't bringing no kids into this. Number five, we had to go through all of these different things, and we had to allow the word of God, the spiritual side, and the natural. It says spiritual and natural. We had, to, we had to work both of those together to get to where we are today, and we're still not arrived. We're still working. We're still we're still working hard to to to. When I say hard, meaning we're still working the word and saving money and things to position ourselves the way God says we should be positioned. Um, how many work a job but you still don't have enough? Raise your hand. You work a job but you still at the end of the month you don't have enough. Raise it high. It's okay. We're gonna help each other in here. Put your hands down. You know that's not a good place to be to work every day some of y'all work eight hours a day you work overtime some people work two jobs and you sit at the kitchen table to go through your your income versus expenses and you still never have enough so every month you're pulling from someplace you shouldn't be pulling from to put somewhere else which then makes things worse um how many of you um have a checkings or savings account raise your hand raise your hand real high checkings or savings raise your hand put your hands down how many of you have a savings account savings account and you put your hand out you have you have at least six months of money in that savings account six months of of income raise your hand high okay see see how those hands changed um, because I was taught coming up to get your savings account but we never had anything in it and we put time in it we always go get it out we would go we would go out to eat or go to the mall and we stopped by the ATM and pull from our savings sixty dollars eighty dollars to go eat at Red Lobster with we, we didn't know any better at the time um, how many of you have um, a 401k some kind of retirement fund, 401k, 401b, IRA, something. Raise your hand high. Raise it high. Put your hand down. How many of those, you have one of those, but it's not connected to your job? Raise your hand. Okay. Good. See, 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 see the difference in hands? Um, it's very important. Very important. Because I told you last week that even with your job, we thank God for our jobs, but those companies care nothing about us. I'm just going to be very honest with you. You better trust the Lord. When they get to the table with these mergers and, and all of these um, um, bankruptcies and things, you are not in the, in the equation. They don't care what you've saved up, how many years you've been with the company, what your 401k reads. You get slashed at everything else. So it's good to have things that are not a part of your job as well. How many of you have uh, um, children? Raise your hand. You have children. Raise your hand real high. Real high. Thank you. Put them down. How many of y'all have college fund established for your children? Raise your hand real high. See how the hands change? And, I, and I'm telling you this, this is, this is, this is, this is where we were. Um, it, I, I think our kids were what, maybe two, three or something before we actually got that established. We didn't have it established either. We were just living and grinning and buying them Tonka trucks. Um, but we had to realize that in 10 years, they're going to be going to college and we've planned nothing. And, and my plan shouldn't be he's going to play basketball real good and get a scholarship. Thank God for that. Because in, in, the, in, in the event that that happens, basketball, baseball, whatever, pray, we, come on, we're going to receive that. 
but the money we've been putting up for him, we can use that to get him more established, help him buy his first home, help him buy a car to go back and forth to school with. You know, it's, there's things you can do, but you don't put all your eggs in the basket of he's smart, he can bounce the ball, he can throw a football. Come on, Jack. Um, you, you just can't do that. Um, um, how many of you say, Pastor, my only problem is I just need to make more money? Raise your hand. Raise it high. Don't be honest. I just need to make, if I made more money, I'd be okay. Okay, I'm going to prove to you in this teaching um, and in the class that's going to follow that Sister Darlene Rivers and Pastor Terrence are going, are going to um, um, have, which you should take this class. Um, I'm going to prove that it's not what you make at all. It is how you live according to what you make. Most people in this room, they may not want to admit it, but you live above what you make. Even with you being in the red every month, you still live above what you make. If I went down your, your, your expense list, I can probably go through, and I'm kind of getting into class mode, which I shouldn't be. I can probably go through about five things automatically you probably need to have turned off in your house. That shouldn't be on your expense list. But we have made things a priority that's not a priority. Cable, my friend, is not a priority. Cable costs $300 a month. It is not a priority for anybody I just got to watch my shows you my friend is what I call having a poverty mentality when you put your shows above your future we're going to talk about it today so so I told you last week that the Barnard group shows equal percentages among Christians and non-Christians when it comes to poverty unemployment bankruptcy car repossessions home foreclosures bad credit same thing it's church folk not church folk tell you said but we about to fix that in Jesus name so we first started off talking about how poverty said poverty is not God's will. So I'm not going back through that. I showed you last week how Galatians 3 and 13 says Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. And part of that curse was poverty. Poverty, sickness, and spiritual death. You've been redeemed from poverty. Say, I have been redeemed. Come on, say it loud. I've been redeemed. Say, I've been released. I've been freed from poverty. Some of y'all ain't even saying it loud. I'm saying, I've been redeemed from poverty say I ain't, ain't. pull no, no more I know it's bad English but say it say I ain't, ain't. pull no, no more what you have now is pull tendencies that you need to now renew your mind and get past you ain't pull no more come on say it say I ain't. I ain't I know it ain't good English but I just like how that sound say I ain't Po, no, no more. I mean, Paul. Now, Paul. Poor, write this down. You might want to get last week's teaching to kind of catch up. I can't go through all of it. Um, um, poor or poverty is a mentality. Write that down. It is not a neighborhood, it's not a color of people. It is not. Yeah, see, the west side is, is pole over there. No, no, it's not an area. It's a, it's a mindset. It comes in all colors, all shapes. It's all over the world. Yeah. Um, po po poverty is a mentality, and it, it influences behavior. A poverty mentality believes that money shouldn't be spent. Notice people that kind of hold money all the time. They go out to eat, they won't even order none to drink because they don't want to pay for it, they just order water. Y'all hey. laughing, but I'm going to come down your row in just a minute. It's, we're going to start a fighting here today, Jason. I know that already. Um, a poverty mentality says that um, belief, um, um, opportunities are limited. You believe they're limited. There, there's not a lot of opportunity out here, and I got to fight for what I fight for, get what I get. Um, a poverty mentality does not take a risk. You think they're dangerous? I wrote this down. I want to give you this. I didn't plan on this, Pastor Terrence, but I'm just kind of going to stay in this classroom mode today. I want to. I really want to get this get this across. See, this is this is so passionate for me because all of what I'm teaching you, I've been there. Here's the thing: I was there and didn't know it had a poverty mentality, a scarcity mentality, was broke as all get out, 
and, and partially really didn't know it. I thought I was doing better than what I was doing. I thought because, you know, you know, the car note was due, we didn't have it, but I was able to call them and tell them to put that note on the back end of the, the thing. We were doing good. I, I don't have the car note this month, so can you put it at the end of the note um, and so I can get some, I can breathe this month. And, 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 and instead of me properly breathing that month, I did more stupid financial things. So now next month, I ain't got it again. I know I'm in the room today. See, we, see we, want, we want to shout over this and we don't want to talk about it. I've been there. I can, I can talk about this with boldness and clarity and with love because I have been there. It did not feel good and I, I don't like to see God's people in that position. And we have been shouting too long and prospering too short. Signs of, write this down, signs of poverty mentality. You are relationally possessive because it goes beyond money, but it all comes back to money. You're relationally possessive. You're afraid your friends may like somebody else more than you. You want them to hang with nobody else. They got to come to your house, got to call you. They got to stay with you. They can't do nothing else. If they do, you're checking on them because you're relational, relationally possessive. I'm going to tie this into your money. You are negative about folk with money. It's always they got it the wrong way. They're doing something wrong. They ain't no good. Yep, they got it, but. He got money, but. She thinks she all left, but. Her mama left for that money. And why do we think it's something wrong when people say, her mama them left for that. They supposed to left for that. How is that a bad thing? Only reason she got that because her mama them left it for it. Um, yeah, that's Bible. One for her daddy, she wouldn't have nothing. Exactly. Her daddy understands Proverbs chapter 13. We're going to talk about it today because we've been, we've, been, we've been pouring salt on those that got money because we ain't got none. You have a poverty mentality when, or you're a sign of it when you're negative about folk with money, influence, or power. You're jealous of folk that have more than you seemingly. You're low, what they call it? You're low-key jealous of folk that got more than you. You may smile in their face but you low key like, mm. You <laughs> Poverty mentality. You make a lot of excuses. There's an excuse for everything. Why you didn't go to work, why you came to work, why you got to work late, why you didn't come to church, why you didn't pay the bill, why you paid the bill, why you didn't get the car, why you didn't go to McDonald's. There's always an excuse for everything. You find a problem with every opportunity and you're terrified of taking risk. Let's step out, brother. Nah, nah. You, 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 you're looking for the, for the problem with everything. This is an open door for us. We can do this. We can, we can advance here. No, nah, brother, because you know, them folk down there, they don't like us anyway. And, I, and my mama, she went on last week and they told her there's always fear when it comes to stepping out. You always feel like something's going to go wrong. So all of your decisions are fear-based. I'm talking about me. I'm, I'm expressing me, my position of, of my old poverty mentality in this lesson. That's where I got this from. I'm telling you, you the, 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 every decision-making comes through fear. It's all fear-based. And that's why it's dangerous for men to walk in a poverty mentality because you're supposed to leave the home and they're waiting for you to make moves, but you're always in fear. So you can't even make a decision. So she's waiting on you to say, tell us what to do. I, I, I'm praying about it. We have behind it, I'm praying about it. Did God say something yet? No, he ain't said nothing yet. It's been four years, Jim. I, I know, I, I asked him last night. He said he, he was working on Peter. He gonna get, no, 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 no. What? A poverty mentality causes you to live in shame. When I realized what I had, it was, I was, it was, I, I was shameful. And listen, shame is not the will of God. Um, I want to preach a message called shame off you. Cause, cause we used to send shame on you and shame is not, not the will of God. It says shame is not the will of God because shame says, communicates that, that I'm wrong. Guilt says I've done something wrong. Shame says I'm wrong. 
I'm not a good person, I'm a bad person. Um, and, and when you have this poverty mentality, it causes you to live in shame. And when you live in shame, there is no confidence, there is no boldness. There is no stepping out. There is no talking up. There is no speaking up. There is no movement because I'm living in shame because I see myself as a wrong person. So, so you, you cannot take the head off of poverty without dealing with this mentality. Taking the head off don't mean we're going to stop paying our bills and paying our tithe. Because one, I, I've heard all of these one-sided messages about taking the head off poverty and they were all around pay your tithe. You got to do more than pay your tithe. You got to learn how to govern the other 90%. Or you're going to pay your tithe and drown. Because there was a season when I got that part together and we paid our tithe every week. We were still broke. Capital One was calling. Sally Mae was calling. They was all calling the phone, Jack. Are y'all here? Sounds a party mentality. Um, you feel like a victim or you live as a victim. So that, that's a whole other mentality there but it falls under the poverty mentality you ever met somebody and everything is somebody else's fault yeah. if my mama had her if my daddy hadn't her if my sister should have and my brother could have and if I had to went to school if I should have I should have stayed home my mama had about this if my daddy had went there my daddy if he had been in our house it's always you, you're the victim and when you are born again greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. I'm not a survivor anymore. I used to survive, but now I'm an overcomer. Despite my past, despite who wasn't there, who didn't come, who, who, who didn't, I didn't grow up with, what they didn't give me, I didn't have both parents in the house, I don't know my father, I don't know my mama, despite all of that, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And he always causes me to triumph. Regardless of my past, we all got a past. We all come from dysfunction. So stop all this. Some of y'all dysfunctional. We all are. Functional don't mean both parents were there. Because you could have both parents there and still be just as dysfunctional as somebody was raised by a crackhead mama. Come on here. So can we get over this victim mentality despite your past, despite what happened, despite what didn't happen, despite what went wrong, despite who didn't say nothing to you or who should have said something or who said the wrong thing or what school you didn't go to or what school you did go to or what side of the tracks you were born on or how you were poor or they didn't give you this or they kicked you out. Your mama left you despite all of that. We don't, we don't, we don't make little of it. But despite that, God is still a good God. Despite that, he's still on my side. So stop it with the victim mentality. See, victims like to stay victims because nothing has to change. Because they know change begins with me. So as long as I stay the victim, I ain't got to change. So everybody get, begins to relate to me based on my victim mentality. They approach me as, you know, her mama left her when she was four. I'm, I'm 83 now. And that's still how I'm approached all the time. You approach you like, you know, she fragile because her mama left her when she was little. I'm, I, I'm not being, I'm telling you the truth here. I, I, I'm trying to get some truths across to help us because we can't shout about the breakthrough but not deal with this stuff right here. At some point, I got to grow past that. At some point, I got to get past even my own issue of what I should have done. I, I got to at some point get past all of my regrets because my regrets sometimes make me a victim. Yeah. You ever sat back and rehearsed all of what you should have done? Yeah. Or what you could have done? Or what you could be at this point in life had you done this? Stop rehearsing that. Yeah. Forgetting those things that are behind and move forward. Yeah. If I hadn't married him, if I hadn't married her, if I hadn't did this, if I, it, it, it's done now, it's done now. Let's move, don't you think God had all that calculated? He knew what mess up you were going to make and what things you were not going to do but he's still God and he's a God of restoration
salvation. He's a God of second chance. And it does not matter what you've been through, what you face. It doesn't change his original plan for your life. Yes, a lot of us got off course. I'm sorry. All of us got off course. But God is still God. And his expected end is still in place. And he's not changed his mind. So stop it with what you should have, would have, could have. It keeps you locked in to a mentality that can never produce. So on your job, you don't produce. In your marriage, you don't produce. In your family, you don't produce. On the playground, you don't produce because you're locked into the wrong mentality. But this man that was in Christ Jesus is the only man you should be adopting. Come on here. Say, I have the mind of Christ. Say it loud. I have the mind of Christ so stop it can we just pause here and stop that can we deal with that there's too many people under my voice right now that are coming to church weekly with regrets and the enemy's using your past to, to, to literally kill some of you because you spend all of your time about what you should have done or what you didn't do or what somebody did to you and you got to get past that I, you know I grew up my mother done put us through the best schools they did the best they could when, you know, elementary school they went to, I went to Weber High School which is all boys private school I never wanted to go there but they thought it was better for me because of the time and all the high schools they were really bad then so I'm going to sacrifice between this Weber High School I didn't want to go there I wanted to go to Whitney Young I felt like I was an artsy kid that would be better for me, you know, um, not because it was girls, but because it was more things, more things offered. Because I wasn't really the sports guy, but at the ball boys, it was just sports. You're going to kick a ball or throw one. It was one of the two. And, and I, I got on the football team and I went through these practices, right? These, these two a days, they would call them. We'd be there from like six in the morning, Jack, to like eight at night. And then the, I didn't know no better. So the first game came, I didn't get in the game. So I'm like, dude, I've been to practice like for a whole 30 days, Jack. I done lost 10 pounds and I'm not going to get in the game. I'm like, I'm out of here. So I quit the team. So now I'm in school. It's either throw a ball or kick one or get in the band. So I get in the band, right? I learned how to play the trumpet. I can play that too. Just to let you know. Because y'all think I got this area hemmed up. I can play some stuff too. But I, I, I begin to go through my life always thinking how different it would have been had I went to Whitney Young. What opportunities did I miss by not going there? And then even late into the years, I'm looking back at the kids that are in school now saying, see all the things that they're doing? I could have did that. And Lord had to correct me because you can spend so much time talking about back then and what coulda, shoulda, woulda that you missed what he's trying to do in your life right now. And so where I am, 44, talking about, yeah, I, and I, I still was saying sometimes, I, I, I wanted to go to Whitney Young. I should have went to Whitney Young. Like, dude, you 44, let that go. <laughs> you didn't go to Whitney Young. Get over it. Yeah. Come on, turn it up and say, let me help you this morning. Yeah. Say, get over it in Jesus' name. Yeah. I ain't trying to be offensive. I ain't trying to rain on your parade, but I got to help you by the Holy Ghost. Tell them, say, get over it in Jesus' name. Tell them, say, God is trying to do great things to your life. He's trying to do exploits to you. And you caught up in your past. Tell him, get over it. If you hear nothing else I say today, hear that. That's just one example. And you know, I got out of high school and I went to, it wasn't even Robert Morris University, it was Robert Morris College back then. They were renting a building downtown on LaSalle. They were just getting started. I think I'm going to go there. Offer me to go here. No, I'm going to go downtown. You know, God. It's easy. It's quick. Jump on the green line. Then I start seeing my brothers and sisters doing it. I'm like, maybe I should have went there. Yeah, I should have went. How many of y'all in this should have would have? Come on, don't you be honest. You, that, that's a trick of the enemy. I remember a guy came to my house. I came home from high school. He was sitting out in front of my house, Jack, from the army. Full gear. He tried hard to recruit me. And I said, no, Jack, I ain't going. Because back then they was fighting. <laughs> and said, I ain't got time to be 
graduate from high school and going on prom and then wake up in Iraq. I can't be doing that. So he tried hard. I said, no, doc, I ain't going. And so I didn't go. But then I began to think, what if I had to win? And I spent the period of my life in this whole what if. And I would, I would rehearse it all the time to the point of almost depression of what would have happened if I would have. I'm helping you today. And I had to get to the point where regardless of what I could have, should have, would have, I'm still on course with God's plan for my life. You got you to gotta believe that. See, some of y'all, y'all sing about the Lord, but you don't believe that because you don't relate with him. You don't have relationship. He had to talk to me and say, hey, I know what could have, should have, would have, but you still on course. That's good stuff right there. Because I spent too much time, Chris, talking about what I should have went and where I should have went and how I should have did it and I should have came back and I shouldn't have stayed and I, all, all this old stuff. It, it was even a season of my life. Can I just be honest? Well, I, 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 I thought I missed something by not being carnal. Y'all, see, y'all don't want to talk honest here. You, y'all going to be honest with me? You're going to be honest with me. Because, you know, I, I grew up born again. I, I was... I think I was born saved. See, I came out the womb speaking in tongues. No, I'm just playing. No. I got filled with the Holy Ghost at 12. Now, I've made some mistakes. I've done some stupid stuff. Um, um, I mean, really. I, I, I still mess up now. Anybody else? But there was a season, even in my messing up, um, um, Elder, there were some things that I just wouldn't cross. And there was a season where I felt like I'm missing somebody not crossing this line. Y'all, y'all, y'all about to come with me here. Come walk with me here. There, there, there's, there's, there, I mean, I see them over here. They chilling and they traveling. They do, I, did I miss it? Should I have, should I have enjoyed this season first and then came to the, what? And, he, and then he played with me with all of that. See, y'all, y'all don't want no honest preacher. Y'all want somebody to play with y'all. Because I'm all up and through y'all purple row. I know I am. Because that's why some of y'all now is caught up because you had the same thoughts and you gave in to them. I always got time to come back to Jesus. He'll always be there. Yeah, but I ain't got to come back wounded and raggedy. I want to save, serve God in my prime. Come on here. But I went through these things, Pastor Terrence, of coulda, wouldas, and shouldas. And I would question where I was and am I in the right place and, 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 and the whole Lord had to show me this was all related to a poverty victim mentality. If my, if my mom sent me there, it'll be better. If they talked to me about this. It would, I'm, looking, I'm looking for people to blame for my life that I'm not happy with. Ooh, y'all about it. Y'all about it. It's, it's rich up in here this morning. Because I can't, I can't turn the mirror and say, it's me. So I got to find somebody else to blame. It's got to be the teacher or my mama or this guy or that guy or that guy prophesied wrong. Or if they had to took me down there, if they hadn't dropped me off, if my mama had to knew more of my data, it was somebody to blame. And God said one day just said, stop it. Stop it. Stop it. And embrace where you are. And forget those things that are behind. Not, not, now, now, not forgetting as in because all of my life lessons make up who I am today. But forgetting all of the negative influences that would try to keep me from my past. Things from my past that would try to keep me in my past, I got to forget those. The mindset that I was in back then, I got to forget that. Come on here. I ain't even got past the introduction, man. Signs of poverty mentality. I'm, I'm trying to get through this, y'all. You think too much about your lack of money. You're always rehearsing what you ain't got. You sit up and have these long daydreams about what you want to do, but you ain't got the money to do it. That's a poverty mentality. You ever heard somebody, you just get... You get you, you, you just get, you get tired of hearing them talk about what they want to do, but they ain't got no money to do it. Girl, shut up. What, how you going to get to the place of getting the money then? We know what the problem is. What's the solution? 
poverty mentality. I'm just reading you my notes. I'm reading you me. These are signs. Because somebody asked you, well, how do you know you got a poverty mentality? I said, I'll tell you on Sunday. So I put this together here. Um, because poverty, and I want you to get this. I need, because this is what we're going to chat. It is a mentality. This is why Jesus said in Matthew chapter 11, go there, Matthew chapter 11. Are y'all still here? Man, this is good stuff, I'm telling you. Come on, come on, we gotta go, we gotta go. He says, uh, now it came to, to pass, verse one, when Jesus finished commanding his 12 disciples that he departed from there to teach and to preach in their cities. The blind see and the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed and the deaf hear, the dead are raised up and the poor have the gospel preached to them. The poor have the gospel preached. Why? Because the gospel is you now gaining understanding of the finished work of Jesus Christ that not just qualifies but legally makes you not poor no more. I need you to see this. If you can see this, you'll get the budget stuff. You'll get to add one plus one and get two. But you got to see that God does not want you poor. Go, go to Psalms 35. I need you, I, I got to get you to see this first. Now, 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 Sister Darlene Rivers, Rivers and Associates, and Pastor Terrence, they're going to put together this class. Darlene ain't going to hit you with that natural side. He's going to hit you with the spiritual side. This class is going to hit you right, and you're going to be well off before the end of this year. But you got to take the class. Psalms 35, verse 27. Look at it in the new, the new international version. See, the reason a lot of times teaching is not, a, not effective it's because you teach from a place you've not been. Or you're teaching people about a season that you're in yourself. Gone are the days of leaders been in the same season as those that are following them. May those who delight in my vindication shout for joy and gladness. May they always say, the Lord be exalted who delights. Look, look in the well-being of his servant. How many of you are servants of the Lord? Raise your hand. God wants you to do well. I need you to hear that. Some of y'all heard it before. It's religion to you. Praise God. I know it. I quicken when I heard it. Some of y'all don't get it. I need you to get it. God wants you to do well. He's in heaven. He's smiling for you to do well. He, you know, my, 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 my son plays baseball. Jaden does, right, Jace? Um, can I call you JP? Okay, JP. So he plays baseball. Um, and he played last year he did pretty good to the point where one of the guys recruited him to play this year on another team but he started off real slow he started off struggling he, no hits, two games, strikeouts you know he's really down on himself so he had a game on Wednesday and, and I think it's Thursday, whatever they had a game and huh, Wednesday help me sister um, and so <laughs> I'm out of town at a conference and I knew he had this game so I called him after school and 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 because I'm his dad and I want him to do well. How many of y'all got children want them to do well? I don't like being at the game and the sister in the bed and all the parents looking and my son strike out. It's like ah, because I want my boy to do well. I'm gonna love him regardless, but sometimes other folk can sum your kids up based on them not doing well. And so I called him and I said, hey, son. I said, you got a game tonight? He said, yeah. I said, listen. I says, um, you've been kind of struggling through. I said, but I, I don't want you to go to the plate defeated. I said, I think you've been going to the plate defeated. You've been going to the plate with thoughts of, I hope I don't strike out, which is fear. And fear brings the very thing you don't want. So you go to the place and I hope I don't strike out and I strike out. I said, so this time you go to the plate, take a deep breath, calm down, go in confidence. I says, and what is our saying that we keep? He says, I can do all things through Christ. I said, exactly. Go to the plate with that. And so he, go, Brenda takes him to the game because I was out of town, London had to go to West Campus and I get a text. And it says, first time up the bat, he hit a double. And so I told, 
I was sitting next to Pastor Terrence in the conference. I said, hey, man, I was almost emotional like I am now. Because I want to see my kids do well. And if me being evil know how to think that way toward my children, how much more? Shabbat Does God want you to do well? So I said, Pastor Terrence, I said, I said, my son hit a double. And I was, I was excited. I was emotional because I wanted him to do well. Then I got another text that says, he hit a single. I said, Ooh. And I believe when we hit home runs on earth, heaven and God is up there saying, hey, my son did it. My daughter did it. They got a double. They got a triple. Oh, come on here. A triple in their marriage. A triple in their finances. A triple in their thinking. In every area of their life, God is pleased because he wants his servants to do all. I felt the preacher for a minute. Okay, sit down. And so I was sitting in this car. I was emotional, Jack. I was holding back tears because my son hit a double. And I text him and I says, I'm about to cry at the conference. Big old grown man about to cry. But he says he takes pleasure when his children do well. Look, look, at the, look at the correlation. He also took pleasure to bruise Jesus. The Bible says it pleased the father to bruise him. Why? Because he know the bruising of Jesus was going to put you in place to do well in life. So if it pleases him to see you doing well, I ain't trying to disappoint him, Jack. I want to do well. <laughs> Are y'all getting it? This, this, this is layered this morning. Go to Proverbs. Ooh wee. Tell your neighbor say, ooh wee. Ain't this good, Brenda? This is good, ain't it? It's good, Sharetta. I know it's good. This is blessing me. We're taking the head off of poverty. Yeah. And here's the thing. Sometimes it takes more than one swing. You ever been at a, at a kid's party and they trying to bust that pinata? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to take some swings. Darlene going to take some swings. See, we ain't trying to help church with y'all. I'm trying to get y'all a place of doing well. Are you listening to me? Proverbs, why tell you turn? I didn't say where to turn. Y'all should have picked it up in the spirit, y'all. <laughs> With Proverbs, that ain't where I'm at. I'm in 3rd John. So you want to hear what I got to say? Turn to 3rd John. Come on, I got, I got 15 seconds. What is God's answer to poverty? I went through it last week. I'll give it to you real quick. It is spiritual growth. It is mind renewal. Now we're going to come back and park here. This is the one right here. This is the one. This mind renewal, if you can get this one, if you can get this one, the one, we're well on the way. You can get this mind flip. See, you going to that church and they brainwashing you. Your dog on right, we are. We're getting rid of your old stinking thinking and replacing it with word thinking. We got to watch what we say. Yes, you ought to be brainwashed at church as long as it's coming from the word of God. Because my brain was jacked up. London been studying this whole mind and brain thing. I don't understand a lot of Would you teach some of this with me? Come, make that one. How many of y'all want to hear Pastor London teach some of this with me? Look at that. Yeah. Next week, because we out of time. So I'm going to take some swings. You're going to take some swings. You're going to take, we're going we gonna to do this. Because she's been studying this mind thing and I don't get into that. I, she doing that. So she got to, she, she be telling me and I don't want her to tell me and I tell y'all, you got to tell them. She got me different between the mind and the brain. I was like, what? 
You got this thing about how she said, be like, what? <laughs> so what did I say? What was that? I'm all over. My renewal. I, I'm all over, Jack. Answer the poverty. One was spiritual growth. Two was three was personal responsibility. Four was strong work ethic. Go to third John two. And then I'll stop here and I'll pick it up next Sunday. But it's lunchtime. How many of y'all would stay if I taught until 12, 15? Raise your hand. If I taught right through the 12, you would stay? Put your hand down. How many of y'all would leave? <laughs> I got a hand right here in the corner. He's, he said he would leave. Praise the Lord. <laughs> At least he honest. He said, I'm I said, Pass, I'm out of here, Jack. I'm going to give you the 12, then I got to go, man. <laughs> Third John 2. Beloved, I wish above all things, which means there are some things that he wishes for us. But above all those, <laughs> above everything he wishes for us, above all of that, he has good thoughts toward us, but above all those, I wish that you may prosper and be in even though. What does that even mean? In align with. Come on, talk to me. Equal with. Your soul prospering. So I got a whole lot of thoughts and wishes for you but above all those thoughts, this is my highest thought for you, is that you prosper and be in health, but it's not gonna happen unless it's equivalent with or equal with your soul, your, your thinking, your choosing, your feelings. Look, your imagination. Some of y'all dreaming wrong. When, when bad or wrong imaginations enter my thought life, I wake up at night. You can't rest here. I get up, get up, go get some water, go pee, do something. No, I, I, I'm not, cause, cause you give permission to continue the movie. And you'll lay there in an unconscious state. You sleep, but you're dreaming about something. Very well aware what you're dreaming about. So I could go somewhere, but there's kids here. Because I, I, I want to really break this down for you. Uh, she said, send the kids out. She's way selfish, ain't they? Some of you are dreaming wrong. You have a right to wake up when your dreams go astray. I was in a dream. I couldn't do it. I was just dreaming. No, 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 no. You were very much in control. That's why you woke up and told us about it. Which means you could have stopped it. I believe, oh, that's a whole, I don't, I don't know if I can go there. I, I was, let me think through this. No, I can't do that. No, even with your soul. No, no, no I'm, I'm serious. I, 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 I'm not trying to be graphic, but I can teach you some stuff on this based on my life. Because one of the things the enemy tries to attack with leaders is their dreams. Oh, man. So I got to watch how I go to sleep, what I watch before I go to sleep, what I, what, what's in my eye gates, because he tries to attack my dreams all the time. There, there's been times I, I, I have been in the bed and, and literally paralyzed. I couldn't, I couldn't even reach over and grab London. But I could muster up in that dream a yell. And so I would yell and it would wake her up and she would grab me. So you got to have a woman to know how to grab you in the spirit. Are y'all listening to me? 
So, so I, I wish above all that I wish, I wish above that you prosper, that you do well, that your body be in health, your mind be in health, be healthy, not, not just healthy in, in, I don't have diabetes, I don't have cancer, but healthy in your thinking. Yeah. But that's even with your soul. So this mind renewal starts with your soul. There are two things that believers must learn. Well, three. After they receive the Holy Ghost, after they receive Jesus and get saved. He says in Acts chapter 19, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? You need the infilling of the Holy Ghost. Number two, you need to be, you have something about faith. And number three, you need to know about renewing your mind. Those three. Those three gotta have those three but the mind renewal piece the reason believers sing about the goodness of God but never experience it because their mind has not been renewed they still think like they thought before they got saved it's called stinking thinking and we got to get rid of it you know you see people that have moved on up like the Jeffersons making good money got a nice place to live but still acting like they live in like the Evans family. You know, I, 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 I love entertainment of good times, but it's a terrible show to watch. It's, it's, it's funny that back in the early 70s, they had a lot of shows, but for us, we had Sanford and Son and Good Times. And then finally, we moved on up with Weezy and George to a deluxe apartment in the sky. For the most part, we had Florida trying to pay $8 rent, her and black Jesus, come on here. We had James shooting pool to pay the rent. We had little black panther Michael who was against everybody white. We had, we had Gertie eating dog food in the apartment next door. This is terrible show. This is how I turn on TV and see myself. And sometimes when you graduate from that, if you don't change your mind, you still live there. And so what we're going to do, me and PL, yeah. come on, say amen for PL. Amen. amen. <laughs> now, I ain't got but two weeks to do it, so y'all come with your notes, because we ain't got a long time. We, we got Mother's Day coming up, and we got to wear our hats and stuff, so we can't, can't label with it. But we're going to hit it next Sunday. And I want you to be prepared. If we can next Sunday, sing and get on to the word. So I can have time to walk through this, me and PL. How about that? Yes. Will y'all come back? Yes. Well, give God praise for what we heard today. I can't keep going. Yes. Clap your hands and celebrate yes. the goodness of our God, the power of the word, the power of the cross. Stand on your feet, everybody. Let's go. Hallelujah.